Like I said, we washed this thing at least two times and degreased it. We just, our steam washer's down. But uh, it's just, it had oil pouring everywhere, every orifice, every gasket, every seal. Hopefully we can get away with putting a gasket on and, and the seals and gaskets aren't damaged. They were just pushing out. All right, so unfortunately yesterday I didn't have batteries for the camera. Uh, so the dismantling process of getting this engine out, uh, we didn't, didn't go through. We'll have to do a video on pulling the Briggs engines. But as far as replacing the head gaskets, I've got one side in, still intact. We haven't pulled the bad side. Um, just a quick overview with the casing or saws because the motor is facing, the file is facing back towards you. The motor's got to come out in order to do the head gaskets because you got to be able to get the, these intake bolts here that are on the back of the head. As you can see, this thing is just filthy neglected unfortunately um and then the linkage for your throttle all has to get unbolted obviously all the heat shields and the covers and the tins muffler has to get unbolted all pretty kind of self-explanatory things that get unbolted this shield is gonna have to come off this side we left that um it's gonna come off for this side the other side already took off we pulled the head uh this side gasket was okay Piston's fairly clean. I mean, it's got a little carbon on there, but not the end of the world. So we're going to actually end up pulling this flywheel, checking the rear main seal. We're going to replace these coil packs in here. Because while the engine's out, now is the time to do all this stuff. Uh, we're going to do some carb work because the carb has to, the motor has to come out of the casing or saws in order to get the carb off because you have to get to these intake manifold bolts to get the carb off. So just because this is faced, facing the flywheel, facing the operator, uh, it makes for a little bit more difficulty with the motor comes out fairly easy it's literally four motor mount bolts gas line couple electrical lines starter line and a few other small things and the motor's right out and then obviously you, you disconnect the pump here or if you're just doing the carb you don't necessarily have to disconnect this this off of here sometimes you can get everything slid far enough back and the motor pulled forward with the pump because there's some slack on those rubber lines that you can uh, pull the cover the flywheel cover forward and get to the bolts and stuff but uh end of the day it's really not that hard just taking these two bolts and now you got everything moved around and easier to work on so we'll video on the tripod this can be a little tough i don't have a camera person but we'll video on the tripod just pulling this head and then uh, we'll video the reassembly and when we do that you'll see how everything goes back together then you'll have a good idea how it, how it came apart okay so on this side we've got to remove this voltage regulator or rectifier and those are 10 millimeters. 90% of the stuff in this Briggs engine is going to be metric. Not freedom units, but metric. A lot of it's 10 and 12 millimeter, pretty common sizes. So we already disconnected the wires on this that are coming from the tractor itself. Just the two that are still plugged in are going to be coming from the stator behind the flywheel that was basically your alternator. We got the spark plug out already. So what else is going to be holding this one on is there's another 10 millimeter I believe it is right here too. That'll pull out of there. On the back of here, there's the wires for the shutoff for the coils and the diodes. And they get unplug uh, unplugged here. It was just a spade connector essentially. And there's going to be one over here. Same deal, 10 millimeter. And then there's one back in here. Probably can't see it on the camera angle, but again, another 10 millimeter. And then another nice clean tin. If this thing ever caught on fire, boy, I'm surprised it didn't. And I'm surprised this thing didn't blow up and overheat. It's been overheated, but I don't think to the point where it's done serious damage. And then these come off here. We already had this loosened up earlier, but these again are 10 millimeters. And there's sealing washers behind it. There should be on most models. We already took them off on this when we we're doing the uh, diagnostic. And here's your valves and valve springs and your rockers. You push rods are back here. So you got to take the rockers off to get to the head bolts. We only have four head bolts on these overhead brakes. These again are 10. So with the rockers, you're going to want to keep the rockers and the push rods mated with the way they came off. So your intake rocker, intake push rod for this head has to be separated 
from your intake from that head also from the exhaust too. Same thing with the head bolts, we put the head bolts in the same hole. So on a piece of cardboard or, or whatever, mark intake or exhaust, this will be your exhaust. This is your exhaust rocker, whatever side you want to call it, if you're facing the flywheel. And then this is going to be your intake rocker and your intake push rod for this side. So you got to keep everything separate so it all goes back the same way it came in essentially is what the, what the goal is there. When you take these out, inspect them for damage. Damage or wear. This actually, the stud's coming off with the nut. So inspect the, the push rods for any kind of damage. Make sure they're straight. Pretty common that these actually bend on the Briggs. Luckily this one actually doesn't look too bad on the intake side at least. Straight. The ends are in decent shape. Smooth. Exhaust. Same thing. Make sure the rockers aren't damaged, bent, beat up, chipped. They look fine. Quick inspection. The exhaust rod looks fine too. Push rod. Okay, and then back here, we're going to have the intake bolts. There's two of them. Oh, they are 12. These are 12 millimeters. Well, chances are there's wire ties and, and stuff zip locked or zip tied to the intake. You have to get those off of there. And then these two 12 millimeter bolts that hold the intake to the head come off. And then your intake and carburetor come off. We already disconnected the fuel pump. We've still got the wire here for the fuel solenoid shut off. And now this carburetor is ready to get cleaned, rebuilt, replaced, whatever we decide to do here, or the customer decides to do. And then you have your two muffler bolts on this side. So these most of the times I'd recommend taking off with a a wrench or a ratchet to feel you don't want them breaking in to get a feel for them unless you're really used to using an impact gun then you can get a feel but I would start it on a lower setting 12 millimeters these are gonna come nice and then this is gonna be held in on, on top of that. so now your head everything's free and off it double check it it should be just your four head bolts left here again we wiped this down and blew it down and stuff. It's just still caked and, and stuff. Uh, the covers were holding a lot in there, but we're going to clean this all up anyways. But you want to get everything off there you, you can before you start pulling apart. You don't want anything falling in unnecessarily. These, most of the times, we'd recommend taking off with a, a wrench too, but you can do it with an impact. Or a socket, I should say, and a ratchet, but you can do it with an impact. Got it in a low setting for a reason. And she come off. Again, you want, you want these, these bolts to go back to the same place. So this is going to be the top on the exhaust side. This is going to be the bottom on the exhaust side. So when you put them down, make sure they get separated and marked. Top intake and bottom intake, keep them separated. Sometimes these will pop right off. Sometimes you got to give them a little light whack. I don't know if you can see or not, but this is where the gas gets compromised, right here. It's a little bit cleaner here. It's where the exhaust was pushing through into this port here, down into the crankcase. So, looks from what we can see is the gas gets compromised here. It's damaged, I mean, it's damaged here too, you can see it. This piece of gasket right here, I don't know if you can see that there. But this hole here is a, a oil drain galley. There's a small hole down here you probably can't see real well. In the back of this head where the oil drains down into the back into the crankcase. Uh, this this is where it was getting con uh, pressurized, compromised. The exhaust was going in there, blowing up here. We saw the smoke coming out of here. Also blowing down here into the crankcase and coming back up here and through the breather. So we'll take this head uh, over to the bench and inspect it a little better. Clean it all up obviously. But the valves don't look damaged, they look to be seating well. But 
we'll inspect it a little better. Make sure the guides look okay. Get a better look in there. But see that to the right? Right here. It's all serrated and beat up. Then you've got this piece here. So that, that's, the, that's the gasket that's damaged here. And uh, honestly, I expected it to be quite a bit worse. But that's plenty, plenty bad there. That's definitely what was wrong. It's the back side of it. You can see it's got a valley gouged through there. But that's essentially pulling the head. We're going to clean all these up the valves, the heads, the pistons. And uh, in order to see how we decarbon valves and heads, we've got videos on colors and onions. We're going to do it essentially the same way, the cleaning process. Uh, just the, the motors are a little different and the heads are a little different, but the cleaning process and, and principles are the same. So be sure to watch those videos on how to, to decarbon, decarbon and adjust valves on own ends and colors, and that'll that'll give you a lesson on how to clean these up right. And now we're just going to clean up the engine, get things cleaned up, and uh, replace a few things, and then we'll come back. Okay, so now we're going to reassemble this head. We took apart the valves, we lapped them in, cleaned them, put new valve seals in. Clean the heads up. Obviously, these are way better than what they look like. The valves are sealing a little better since we laughed them. They're cleaned up. Got brand new head gaskets. Sometimes we use this uh, copper coat gasket stuff. If you got a tractor with a known head problem or if there's imperfections on here or something that works pretty good, most of the time we don't use it. But the brakes we tend to. It usually makes the gasket junk next time if you pull it off, and you really should replace ga head gaskets every time you pull them off, anyways. But just a light coat of this stuff. Let it set up for a few seconds. And we go back and hit it again. A little thicker this time. And you want to get on the machine before it sets up. You got a little bit of time. So this head gasket goes with this slotted part on your oil return here. We took apart, cleaned up all our valve train and parts over here. So this this is the the uh, in, intake side. These are the intake bolts. This is the exhaust bolt. So this is the top top intake, top exhaust. This helps keep the gasket in place. As you can see, we cleaned up, decarbon the piston, the head gasket surface, and everything else here. Done a ton of work on this motor so far. I got a lot more to go. Keep cleaning it up as we go. Unfortunately, the steam cleaner's down, so it's it's making a lot of work. Obviously, you gotta make sure your hood head didn't go on the right way. You can hold the edges a little bit with your fingers there. And use your bolts as guides, get them started. And then this is the old exhaust bolt that went here. And this is the intake. Get these all in finger tight. You usually just, just bottom snug them out. You don't put any force on them yet. But when you're doing them, do them crisscross pattern. Just make sure everything feels centered. That's just sitting on there now. Then we're going to take our torque wrench and set it at 10 to start with. You go diagonal. And then we're going to go to 15, same deal, you go diagonal with them. Then just double check and make sure they're all 
like that. We forgot to tell you, make sure you've got your piston on the top dead center. And on the compression or on the compression stroke, if you can figure it out, it makes life a lot easier assembling your valve system here. So with most vanguards, you have to check for yours. The intake valve push rod is a steel, and the aluminum one goes to the exhaust. We put a little grease on the ends. And if you look down in here, it's gonna be hard to see. I don't know if you can see down in there, but there's little brass looking recesses at the bottom of these push rods sit in. You gotta make sure you're in those. Probably pretty hard to see. Maybe if you move the angle a little bit. There you go. There's one on each side. The bottom of the push rod has to sit down in there. Otherwise, you're gonna have all kinds of problems and bent push rods and maybe more. We're putting our same or same rockers and lifters or uh rockers and, and studs and push rods back where they came from i like to put a little bit of grease here too since everything was cleaned up and dried there's no oil film left on here and then same deal on the back side some here put some in here where the push rod's going to sit where this this goes on the valve the oil will get up here sooner or later but since all this was cleaned up it's going to be dry so best to do it now so your push rod's going to sit down in the recess and this is why you want it on top dead center so your push rod's not fighting as you put this down on this piece of the rock or this square piece has to sit in this square notch here so if your push rod's fighting you it's not going to let that sit all the way down in there and you can have them cocked so you don't want to do that this has to sit in there okay get these tightened in by hand again the aluminum push rod is going on the exhaust touch of grease on the ends and then get it down in there on those recesses where it rides on the lifters A little bit of grease in here. Just so even though dry start up, we'll coat all this with oil anyways, but a little better safe than sorry. Your flat washer goes down. Make sure this square stud is gonna ride in there and your push rod is riding on the, the adjuster. And put these in but hand tight. And if it's fighting you and this is not sitting all the way in there, you're on the wrong stroke. Go all the way down again till the piston comes to top dead center. You don't have to pull the head off to see top dead center. You can look down the spark plug hole. So these should be kind of loose and no pressure on them when you're assembling this. Also, just kind of how you, same way you we would adjust the valves. And then these get torqued to 100 inch pounds, but if you want to look down in your hole, make sure the push rods didn't fall out of the spots and they look good make sure everything looks like it's good i'm going to kind of hold these center over the valves 100 inch pounds there it is again kind of get her centered over the valve And there it is when to see how to adjust the valves go to our Briggs and Stratton overhead valve adjustment video and then we'll show you how to do the valve adjustment now's the time to do that so a couple other things you want to do we recommend highly that you soak these all down with oil since everything was taken apart cleaned to break cleaned just cover them all up real good the springs tappets push rods You'll know you have enough when you start making a mess all over the place. Until then, just keep lubing them up. 
and then also highly suggest that you change the oil since the motor's been opened up before you start it before you check anything everything's going to settle down on the bottom the contaminants get that oil out if you need to dump a little bit of fresh oil to flush it through with the drain plug open that's fine so get the oil changed then you can go through and, and do your test run and all that stuff just because the heads and the valve covers have been off and stuff have, could, could have gotten down in there and you just want to be extra safe we cleaned off the piston we wiped out the cylinder walls before we put the head on the head was obviously clean the key to all this anytime you're working on the engine is keep everything clean and then uh your first time when you're lubing this uh or when you go to start this uh we recommend pulling your your um <clears throat> and cranking this over or, or crank it over without the choke so it doesn't fire just to get some oil pumped back in since it's been sitting there and uh that way the, the oil pump pumps oil up to this thing before it, it fires off because your cylinder has been opened and dried and wiped down as as well as your valve and cam and everything once you do that you put your valve cover back on and that part's done we already did the other side but pretty simple and basic it takes almost more time to pull the shields off and everything off the motor to, to do to get to them so we've got much more work we put a new breather on we put a new crankshaft seal in we got a new alternator coming for this uh, we got some, quite a few other things to do, but we're getting there slowly. Thanks for watching.